Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now one thing that I like to do is I like to make hats or I like to decorate hats. I like to decorate with rhinestones, HTV, and DTF. I have a few different things that I use to press these. Now the first hat press that I ever got, it's one of those big, heavy, clunky ones and I bought it off of Amazon. It does a great job, I love it, but it is pretty heavy. Then I received a couple of different types of handheld presses. Those are nice, they're lightweight, they're small. If you don't have a lot of room in your craft space or you just don't have a lot of muscle power to move around a heavier press, those are good options as well. Well, when Enur reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to try this new hat press, I thought it looked like the perfect solution between a really big heavy hat press and a small press that you have to make sure that you are using even force and pressure with. So on today's video, we're gonna try that out. Things that I'll use today, I'm gonna actually make two hats. They're both gonna be rhinestone hats. I have a toddler size hat and an adult size hat. I have a couple different colors of rhinestones. Again, we're doing rhinestone hats today. I have some rhinestone templates that I cut out with my Romeo, my Caesar Romeo. I have some transfer tape. Now when you're doing rhinestones, you have to use a special kind of transfer tape. I have a lint roller, and then I have a variety of little rhinestone tools. A brush that you use to put them into place. A little wax pen. We'll talk more about these later. Some tweezers. And then this just helps me collect my rhinestones to put them back into the box. The press showed up yesterday when I was out of town and I was so excited to get home. I went ahead and I cut it open, but I haven't taken it out of here yet. Let's go ahead and do that now. And right on top, there's styrofoam to protect it. And then the next thing is instructions. And then I see on the back here that there's a couple of extra fuses, which is always great. There are two heat resistant gloves. And then here's the machine and it's purple. It matches the tumbler press that has the hat attachment that I already have. So I'm excited about that. All right, let's go ahead and lift this out. Now the fact that it's a little bit hard to come out, that means this was packed pretty well. There's what the inside looks like. It opened up. All right, let's pull this back where you can see it. Now there is a larger platen already attached. And then I saw in the box, it said it came with two platens. So this is a smaller one. That's why we're going to play with a toddler hat today and an adult size hat. Let's see how easy it is to switch this out. I have a power cord. And it looks like that's it. Everything's put together, which is nice. So let's go ahead and get it out of the plastic. And I don't know if you can see from your view. I don't think you can. But it has the suction feet. Now in looking at this, there's a little knob right here. And what that does is when I push it down, it lifts this. That's gonna help us stretch our hat over this to hopefully get a really nice smooth press. The on off switch is right here. And then you plug in the power cord right here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get it plugged in. Then we're gonna see how this control panel works. Now, first of all, there's a little film to protect the screen. We'll go ahead and remove that. And then let me go ahead and turn it on. I can see it is set to Fahrenheit. I'm sure it probably tells in the manual how to change it to Celsius if you use Celsius. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on Fahrenheit. And then it says to press, it says to press the OK button. It means to press this set button. P1 is actually your heat. 
I want to go ahead and press this down to 350. And like a lot of them, if you hold it down for a long time, it'll go down quickly. Or if you hold it up for a long time, it'll go up quickly. Or you can just press it one at a time and move it by one degrees. Let's hit set again. Now I'm going to set the time. And for rhinestones, you press them 15 seconds. Then we'll press set one more time and it'll heat up. Now earlier, I think I said you got two sizes of platens. That's what I thought. You actually get two sizes of bases. And to remove this base, you have two screws, one on the right, one on the left. So you loosen those, take those out, pull this off, put this down into place and tighten those screws. When it's time to do our toddler cap, we'll go ahead and go through that process. Placing caps on hat presses takes a little bit of practice. So if you get a hat press, you might be frustrated at first, but once you get the process down, it gets much easier. You lift the lever to get the hat on and then pull out the sweatband if your hat has one. Basically, you want to get the hat on as straight as possible and stretch tightly over the platen. Just keep adjusting your hat until you're happy with the placement. That was actually pretty easy. Now, there is a little gap here, so I probably need to have a small pressing pillow under there. We're going to try it without first. Now let's see if this has the right amount of pressure. Okay, it's lifting off the table a little bit. I'm going to loosen up the pressure so I don't have to press so hard. Okay, I think that's better. So at least on my wood table, these little suction feet, if they really are suction, aren't quite doing the job. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pre-press this hat for about 15 seconds. And notice, hopefully you can see that, when I put this down, it counted down automatically. That's kind of a nice feature. Okay, so let's go ahead and brush our rhinestones in. I'm going to do a larger one for this adult size hat and then a smaller one for the toddler hat. So at that time, we'll change out that base and we'll see if it works well on a smaller hat. Now here's some smaller rhinestone templates that I was working on last night. If you're interested in checking out all my templates, I do have an Etsy shop, so I'll link that in the video description below. And if you're interested in getting a deeper look into rhinestones, check out rhinestone videos on my channel. I have quite a few. Now the stone I'm using now is size SS10. It's kind of a standard size rhinestone for apparel. This is the other one we're going to do. And this little bear, that's made out of what's called SS6. They're quite a bit smaller than SS10s but they work basically the same way. So I'm just gonna kinda go around in circular motions, let these rhinestones fall into place, and then I'm gonna take the extra ones off. To do this, you use this little paint trim brush, and without putting a lot of force downward, I don't wanna dig all those out, just move them off to the side. Then you have to really inspect and see if you have any extras or if any of them are upside down. If you're missing any stones, you can use a tool like this. It's a wax tip. The tips are replaceable. Just lightly touch a stone and put it into place. Or if you have any that are flipped over, you can pull them out, flip them back over, put them back into place. But I'm ready to go ahead and pick this up with my transfer tape. Now this is a special transfer tape. This is called KTM Mask. I get it from Heat Transfer Warehouse. You can't just use just regular transfer tape like you use for vinyl. It needs to be something particular for rhinestones. So once I have my transfer tape down, 
Just going to press down to make sure that those all come up. Let's pull up the transfer tape. If any of them stay in the hole, just place it back down, push on top, and try it again. That was pretty easy. While we're here, let's go ahead and make the smaller bear for my toddler size hat. Now this is just something I got at the Dollar Tree store and it's in the kitchen section. I think they call it a dough cutter or something like that. But you can push your stones up on it. The ones that don't go up on it, basically what I do is I come to the side of my table, I set this little collector thing down right in front of them and then just brush them onto it. Once I have all of them onto it, just tap it Open up your rhinestone container, and then you can just drop those back in there. Now for this little bear, I'm using what's called crystal. So it's just a clear stone with a gray backing. These are crystal stones. They're made out of glass. These are called hotfix rhinestones, and they're called hotfix because it takes heat to affix them to what you're putting them on. So there's adhesive already on these stones, and when you put these under the hat press, or your heat press if you're doing a shirt, that melts that adhesive, and then as you take the shirt off of the press or the hat off of the press, it cools back down enough so you can peel the top off and the stones stay in place. Now, I could keep brushing and brushing like this. And those would fill up. I don't spend too much time doing that. A lot of the times what I'll do is I'll just use my little picker tool, pick up a stone, and put it in the empty holes. I think that's my only empty hole. Let me pull this over to me and see. Yes, that looks great. All right, let me get these stones cleaned up, and then we can put hot fix transfer tape down on the bear as well. Now that's up to temperature. Let's go ahead and put our transfer on top. Okay, so I'm going to put one piece of tape on this side and one on the other. Remember, we're doing this at 350 degrees for 15 seconds. And also, it started counting down on its own. Now I left that down a little bit long because I wanted to see if that beeping would stop or if it would go continuously, and it was going continuously. Sometimes you get three beeps and then something stops. I let this go five times and it was still going. All right, let's go ahead and take this cap off. If you want to, you could press it down a second time after you get the transfer tape off. I haven't found that necessary. Now when you're using hat presses, you can get this ridge right here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of heat to that, try to get rid of that. There's my first hat. Super cute. Now let's go ahead and remove this larger size base. Then let me turn this so you can see what I'm doing. You have the hole right here. Basically, that's going to go down where your screw goes in. So the hole is revealed. And so I'm just going to screw this back in.
let's see if the toddler hat will fit on there. Then I need to flip out that little sweatband. You want to have good, even pressure, and that would get in the way. All right, that looks good. That fits nicely. That's really nice. All right, we're going to preheat this for 15 seconds. And let's go ahead and place our bear down. Trying to get it fairly centered. Again, I probably don't have to use tape, but I like to so I know it's not going to buckle or shift at all. You always want to make sure that the platen is covering whatever transfer you're putting on there. If you get your transfer too close to this bill, sometimes the platen doesn't reach it. All right, let's go ahead and remove that transfer tape. And what I was talking about earlier, if you want to, you can go ahead and press it again after you take that transfer tape off, just to give a little added security. I don't typically do that, but you can. All right, let's tuck that back in. And look at that. That is so cute. So in the end, what do I think about this hat press? I actually really like it. I love the fact that it's not very heavy, it's not very bulky, but you have this great closure feature of a more industrial type hat press. Now, the more industrial type hat presses, they are a little more stable because they weigh more. So you do have to consider that as well. Now, if you decide you'd like to purchase one of these, I do have links in the video description. There's a purple one and a lime green one. I noticed just a little bit ago on Amazon, there's currently a $20 coupon at the time that I made this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until my next video, bye-bye.